Um, let me let me kick it off and, and welcome everybody and thank you for participating in a, an experiment. Uh, this is a, a first virtual tribute that we've uh, tried to craft and my dad has termed it the uncommon celebration. He always likes to name things. The uncommon celebration, the power of a group living tribute. So um, I also know what, what an amazingly challenging time this is for, for everybody. Um, and I know several of you have experienced even uh, more significant hardships recently. Andrew, I know you're really not feeling well. So it's just, um, I'm so grateful. For just uh, enthusiastically jumped in to participate to honor my dad. And you know, this last month has been really rough uh, for everybody. And it's, um, it's reminded us that we have to really reflect and not take for granted uh, the folks that are important to us. And so, um, you know, my dad and I have been chatting uh, almost nightly, and one of the projects he brought up was an idea where, where he wanted to figure out how to craft events to help people um, express their appreciation and gratitude for people that have been important to them. And so I suggested a virtual uh, tribute, and, you know, and I said, and, you know, the best person to do it for would be you. And uh, if you know my dad, he's much more of a giver than a receiver. So it took a few uh, a few trials to get them to finally agree. And I jumped on it and reached out to you and, I, and I'm so grateful that you guys responded so quickly. It didn't allow him the opportunity to change his mind. So that's good. Um, and we've never done one of these before, so we're gonna experiment together, but I'm pretty excited about what we potentially could, could create together today and uh, turn what is a challenging time for all of us into uh, a little bit of a life. So I just wanted to thank you all for, for, for participating. Yeah, I, I thought, I don't know if you wanted to say a few words to welcome folks. Uh, first of all, it's, I am really touched by your presence today. Uh, each, each one of you individually is really so special to me that, that uh, it's hard for you to possibly imagine how much you've influenced my life. And the fact that it was like three days ago and give an assist to Eric, he almost uh, jumped out ahead of all of us here when he heard the idea. He said, I got an idea too, let's do the mentees. The idea that I would have this opportunity uh, to connect with you 100% and, and uh, literally people lying in their bed just to be here to share this moment with me is deeply touching. Uh, it's really further evidence to me that when I think about it, how long we've all been together. Um, six of you I've known since you're in your 20s, three of you before that. Believe it or not, I've spent, I added it up, over 150 years of mentoring relationship with each of the total that are here today. So that works out to like 15 years on average. But uh, for me, just being with one of you at a time is a blessing. And having you all present like this, there's an abundance of riches that's hard to put into words. So I, I am going to be listening, uh, and maybe at the end I'll have some additional comments, but I am so honored to be honored by each of you. So Jason, uh, thank you so much for taking this on, putting it together, making it happen. It's all yours. Okay. So uh, maybe just to kick things off, uh, I, I thought really short intros, since I, I know most of you, um, I haven't met all of you, um, and I don't know that all of you have met each other, so I, um, I'll start. Um, so I'm Jason, uh, one of Walter's twin sons. I live in Hillsborough, California, um, married for 20 years, have two teenage uh, children, Claire and Wilson, and uh, a fun fact, I'm a twin married to a twin. So. Uh, if everybody could just give a brief intro and I've known, I've known Walter for my whole life, actually. So, uh, so Brandon, why don't you uh, start us off? You're on the top left for me. So. Oh, you're on mute, buddy. You're on mute. Can't hear you. My name is Brandon Harrison, everybody. And I am in San Diego, California, and I've been married for 10 years, have three kids, nine, five, and one. And I've known Walter for 12 years now, met him through the Elementary Institute of Science. And a fun fact about me, I was born in Evanston, Illinois, and my brother is Jordan. <laughs> All right, Jordan, 
good. Uh, you're on mute too. So. All right. Well, I guess that's a good segue. Um, good um, morning or afternoon, everyone. I'm in San Diego as well. I met Walter. I guess I kind of used the the brother uh, coattail and just wrote his coattails. Like, who's this Walter guy? And then just got to uh, meet him as well. So it's been just a blessing getting to know him. Um, I don't have a wife. I have a fiance. Uh, wedding TBD with coronavirus going on and everything. And uh, fun fact, I guess I'll say I've been playing the drums for about 15 years. Cool. All right, Jake. What's up, everybody? My name is Jake Havran, and I've had the privilege of knowing Walter for about five years. He and my grandfather, Opa Chuck, were best friends for, I think, like 40 years. And uh, I also live in San Diego. And uh, a fact about me is I love the ocean and, and try and be in the ocean as much as possible. Your dad, I loved your dad. He's a great, great, great guy. Just uh, awesome, uh, fun, funny, funny man. So, Thank all you. right, Eric. I'm uh, Eric Herencall. So I am Walter's nephew, Jason's cousin. When I was little, I thought that if I dressed like uh, Jason and his twin brother Jonathan, people think would think we were triplets. Uh, and um, I would say, so I've known, I've known Walter my whole life. I would say I've kind of officially been in the system for uh, probably like 33 years. <laughs> so um, I've got, uh, my wife Kelly and I live right outside of Philadelphia and we have four kids. My daughter Eliza is 20 and my boys, Daniel, Will and Adam are 18, 15 and 14. Great. And a fun fact about me is uh, when I'm not hurt and when there's no coronavirus around, I like to do jujitsu. I'm glad you didn't know it when we were growing up. That's all I can say. That's, <laughs> that's right. All right, Lisa. Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Ligori, and I met Walter around 2004. Um, he helped me start a forum group, and um, ever since then has just been providing the most unbelievable guidance that changed the course of my life. Uh, I'm in San Diego and uh, interesting fact, we get very little rain here, but once Walter and I nearly got uh, flooded out when we were on a visit to a facility and there was a torrential rain and we had to navigate streets that were getting washed out. Mm. Welcome, welcome Lisa. All right, Andrew, if you can speak. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andrew Zenoff, and uh, I'm, I, I've known Walter uh, since I was a, a, a young, I guess a kid. He was a family friend. Uh, he and Lola were friends with my parents. And um, uh, 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 sorry, I, I'm, I'm struggling with a couple of things right now. So my, my, my mind is actually not working like it used to. Um, but let, let, let me just try to remember what we were talking about. Um, oh, yeah. It's just a quick intro, Andrew, just where you're from and oh, okay, how, thanks. Long, how long you've known him. So. Thanks. Uh, so, so, uh, so, yes, I've known Walter since I was a kid as a family friend. And then uh, I was fortunate enough, like each of you, to have him uh, become a, a mentor uh, for the last uh, about 25 years. And that's how much support I needed. That just gives you an indication how challenged I was. <laughs> Uh, and continue to be. Um, I have uh, a wonderful wife and three kids, uh, seven, six, and uh, three and a half. And uh, they're downstairs doing PE. So if you hear a lot of music in the background when I'm speaking, that's what's going on. And uh, a fun fact about me is uh, I, I, um, I've always been uh, charging at about 150 miles an hour and, and uh, through, through fortunate circumstances, I, I'm charging at about a half a mile an hour right now, but it's great to be here. Thanks. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. Samantha? Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Samantha Ritchie. I currently am in Washington, DC. I live here. I'm from San Diego, though, which uh, is where I met Walter about, what, 12, 13 years ago, I think we can say now. I was 19. Um, working at a hair salon in La Jolla, and Walter was, it still goes there, was one of the clients, so we met that way. Good work, good work. Um, yeah, and I am not, I'm pretty much married to my career right now, so yeah, not married, no kids, and, but I did just adopt a French bulldog, so he's about as high maintenance as I think, you know, I can handle right now. 
And you're in DC now? I am. I live in Washington, DC. Welcome. All right, Tim. Hey guys, uh, I'm Tim Stiefler and um, like you, Andrew, I, I also grew up uh, with Walter. He was a family friend, um, but we didn't really know each other that well. And then I pulled up our first, my first email to him. So Walter and I started the mentorship on April 29th, 2012 at 11.04 p.m. Um, and for, for I think one or two emails, I refer to him as Mr. Green and they quickly, um, told me not to do that. So, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been with Walter for a while and, um, you know, like all of, all of you, I'm sure he's completely changed my life and, and, um, helped give it focus. So, uh, so yeah, really glad to be here. I'm from San Diego. I'm living in LA now. Um, and I, also, I, I'm not with anyone. I don't have kids, but I also adopted a dog who's right there. And that was like three days ago. So it's brand new. Um, and yeah, that's, that's me. What kind of dog is it? Sorry? What kind of dog is it? They, they have no idea. I think no idea. at some point a beagle was in the mix, they okay. think. Uh, but they have no idea. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Tim. I'm a big fan of your dad, too. So Yeah. All right, Leon. Well, I guess uh, I, I've known Uncle Walter. I always call him Uncle Walter. He was my uncle. Uh, my furthest memories go back to 1963 to, to his wedding. I was a uh, ring bearer, and I remember that. Wow. Uh, and um, I live in Albany, New York. I have a wife, Carol, been married 36 years. I have a daughter, Emily. She's 32. We live in Playa Vista, California with her husband, Cameron. And we live in Albany, New York, where we're from originally. In a suburb outside of Albany called Slingerlands, and uh, you know, I, it's my relationship. I guess uh, would be a little unique because he's my uncle and I'm his nephew, and uh, it's been a long. You know, I've known him. I've, my memories go back to 1963, but obviously, uh, uh, you know, it's been around my whole life. So that's that's about all I can uh, interject at this point. Great, thank you, Leon. Okay, well. Um, you know this so the next uh phase i want it to be a little bit more free form and give people an opportunity to share with with walter and with the rest of us um some memories that uh, were meaningful to you and the impact that he's had uh, on on you and your life and i would say whoever wants to volunteer to jump in please just you know raise your hand and and i'll, I'll call on you and if people are bashful i'll I'll cold call you. <laughs> so, all right, Andrew, uh, jump it in. Thanks, Jason. Great to see you and your smiling face and great to see you, Walter. And it, it's wonderful just to see all of the mentees in this collection. It's really powerful uh, as a mentee of Walter's to see each of you. You know, I, I know some of you and it's great to see your faces and others uh, I've heard about since the beginning. Uh, about your enterprises and different things. So it's really special for me to see each one of you and, uh, and share this moment. Um, so uh, just quick caveat, don't wanna take away from it. I I'm, I'm dealing with a little bit of an illness that right, that's impacting my, my thinking and my brain right now. It's, I'll get over it, but uh, bear with me as I try to work with a, a brain that's not functioning very well right now. And, and good fortune, I just had, I uh, got food poisoning about an hour ago. So uh, unlike Walter, who's always extremely prepared, the hour that I was going to use preparing, I ended up in the bathroom instead. So I'm, I'm not prepared, but I don't need to be prepared to talk about this subject because it's so important and dear to my heart, just like each of you. So uh, originally I was introduced to Walter, as I said, as a family friend and I was, I'm an entrepreneur and I, um, was starting my first company and my mom reminded me, um, uh, well, I was raising money for my first company and I, 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 I called Walter to see if he'd be interested in looking at my business plan and, and investing in my company. And, uh, and he said, uh, you know, looks really interesting, but to be honest, I don't really invest in startups like this, but if you ever have a question, you know, feel free to reach out. I'd be available, you know, to talk to you about if you ever have a question. So, I got off, I was like, okay, that sounds great, thanks. Of course, I got off the phone and I thought, oh, geez, you know, 
you know, I need money right now. I don't need an answer to a question. I mean, that's the last thing I need. I, I, what, what good is that going to do for me? So sure enough, about a month later, I found myself in a very challenging situation with uh, an investor on this new business. And my mom reminded me, oh, remember Walter had extended an opportunity to ask him a question if you have it. So this is probably a great one for Walter. So 25 years ago, I, 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 I don't think we had email, but I, I called Walter and uh, I said, can I take you up on that question? And he said, sure. And um, I asked him the question and the answer to that question that I asked has now gone on for 25 years. That the, 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 for 25 years, we have been in a dialogue uh, navigating uh, which started out as my first company, and then I did a I did a second company and a third company. So that question uh, resulted in 25 years of navigating, you know, an entire you know forest of questions that Walter was on the other side of, and uh, which started out as a business mentoring ship really became a, a life mentoring ship, and ultimately a best friend. Um, and really, Walter, uh, I'm sure like each of you, he is, he is literally the single greatest blessing in my life. He has totally transformed uh, every, when I look back, every single thing that is meaningful in my life since the day Walter and I started, every major positive thing has been a direct result of the work and partnership and friendship and mentorship that I have had with you, Walter every single incredible blessing in my life. And I think uh, it has been absolutely transformative in a way that nothing else could. And so um, I'd say some of the sort of key themes that um, when, I, when I'm looking back right now and thinking about it um, was that Walter, you, you, you showed up with a, with a level of commitment that was just unparalleled and unbroken. And, and I have to start with that because your commitment uh, to my process and my journey uh, never wavered at any moment, any time. I mean, going back to the early days, 25 years ago, I would have, you know, I, I, I was up a lot in the middle of the night for many years thinking through things. And, you know, sure enough, Walter would, you know, call me back in the middle of the night and, and you know, get out of bed and talk to me about things. And, it took Lolo a while to get comfortable with that, but um, that's called his <laughs> wife, by the way. Um, but re really, it started. It started. I, the whole, the whole, the whole through line is that your level of commitment to my journey. For I don't know how I got to be so blessed to have this in my life. It was, it was something that I prayed for as a kid, but the way that you showed up and have showed up to me through this day. Uh, it was a hundred percent commitment to work with me through whatever the challenge was. And so to me, it starts with, a, with, with the, the, if I were to outline what the key principles are that I have learned from you, that I live with my children, with my work associates, with employees, with friends, it, it's when I commit to something, it, it, it's a hundred percent, it's with all of me. And that by itself has absolutely made the difference to not only the business part of my life, but the personal part of my life and everything in my life that's wonderful is really, uh, I, I can tie it into the level of commitment that you have provided and offered and shown up with. Um, so that would be the first sort of key aspect that I wanna say uh, thank you for and a highlight if I were to try to dissect why you have been so powerful and how you have made such an impact because the impact you have made on my life ripples out to my wife, my three kids, my employees, my business colleagues, my investors, strangers, my mentees. I mean, there is never a day that I live that I am not consciously aware of something that I'm doing where I'm like, I feel like an imposter because I feel like I'm cheating on what I've learned from you. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm being Walter Green right now. This is exactly what Walter would do or how Walter would say it or how Walter would approach it. And 
So I guess the first thing, and, I, and I'll, I'll just share a couple quickies here, um, is that your level of commitment has been unparalleled, unwavering. And, and that, that gave me an understanding of what commitment, I've always been a committed person, but to have a commitment from a, a male figure, uh, an older male figure in this case, by just a couple of years, but by, by, by receiving a level of commitment from a male figure who was, was, was very thoughtful and caring and loving, as well as brilliant, that commitment has fueled me over, you know, not kidding, thousands of obstacles that otherwise could have buried me. So um, that that for sure is the first through line when and, I look back. Sorry, I don't I don't want to um, cut your flow off, but um, I'm okay. trying to make sure everybody has an opportunity. To I'll jump leave it in there. We'll Thanks. Up, Thank you. Up some, some more, but really, uh, I mean. I can't even believe you didn't have to prepare those comments. I was incredibly articulate and thoughtful. Thank you. I'm going to stop there. That, 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 that in itself is everything. Thank you. Dad, did you want an opportunity to say anything or you want me to keep going? I think in the interest of time, I'm deeply moved, but I would, I would, I would wait till the end and, and have a chance right. to respond. that. Thanks, Jason. Uh, Lisa, I saw your hand jump up early, so. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, First of all, I echo everything that Andrew said. This is very well said. Uh, the commitment and love and just knowing, Walter, that you're there for me 100% is uh, just incredibly powerful and so special. Um, I just feel like I won the lottery. Um, and then the way that you think through things so clearly, I feel like I can feed you all these crazy thoughts and emotions and it enters the ears and out, out through your mouth comes this crystal clear question or um, insight of, of what I'm trying to grapple with. And you do it time and time again, and it, and it blows my mind. Um, so some learnings, some of my key learnings are, and everyone on this call probably uh, understands uh, the power of this thing that you taught me, but start with the end in mind. And doing that just changes the game every single time. So um, it's allowed me to just do everything I do more effectively, including choosing not to do a lot of things. So that one, just day in and day out, I use it. And now when I ask what our ideal outcomes are for things, people will say, well, I'll let you know, mini Walter. <laughs> so um, it's a signature Walter question. Um, and then another one is, to define the game in the way that I can win it. So if there are situations that maybe I have control of some things but not others, it's how am I gonna define this in a way that I, the things I can control, I'm setting up so I can win. Um, and that also just changes the way I strategically look at problems. Um, this is just a very practical thing, but we all do so many meetings every single day and it's how to have a good meeting. <laughs> so know what we want to get out of it. What will a successful meeting have look like and how does the agenda support that? Just such a, such a game changer. Um, and then another huge one is get the question right. So we can spend so much time trying to find answers, but maybe we haven't even gotten the right question. And time and time again, I've brought something to you, Walter, and you've said, okay, well, that's, you know, maybe the question you're, you're grappling with, but the bigger question might be this. And it has once again, allowed me to just elevate my life and my decisions. So I, I could go on for, I, it's, it's impossible to share all that you mean to me, Walter. So, but I want to give other people a chance though. So. I'll leave it at that, but to tell you, I love you so much and not a day goes by that what you've taught me doesn't impact my life and change my trajectory to um, more, a more fulfilling life. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, just for uh, other folks benefit too, tell, give a minute on, on what you guys are working on together because I think that's one of the great partnerships. Um, Oh my gosh, that has been extraordinary. So uh, Walter had an idea for venture philanthropy, which is a term we coined for bringing a similar approach to venture 
capital investing, but to the nonprofit world. And so we defined a set of criteria and kind of acting as general, general partners on behalf of our families, we've been evaluating nonprofits. And the best part of this work is getting to have a front seat to how Walter thinks so clearly, um, communicates lovingly and clearly, and um, runs meetings. So uh, it's just been extraordinary. And to see the way that the nonprofits are responding, especially in these times, has been um, a real blessing. I thought I had a cool job till I heard what you guys were doing. So that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Okay, who, anyone want to jump in? Yeah, I can go. All right, Jake. So, as I mentioned, uh, my grandfather, uh, was, I called him Opa Chuck, and Walter were, were best friends for years. And about five years ago, I had just basically realized the path I was on wasn't working for me. And I went on a journey of self-discovery, and I started blogging. And my grandpa sent Walter my blog, and I was exploring kind of deeper philosophies um, that I was just curious about. And so, Walter and I met, and... Uh, in Rancho Santa Fe and then that was kind of like the spark where I was like whoa this guy is all about the things that I'm just kind of scratching the surface learning about in terms of uh, I was kind of realizing I really wanted to live a life that was meaningful to me and I think um, that's actually one of the, bi the biggest things I've learned from you Walter is really in, in a way of how to measure if I'm actually aligned with the path that I'm on and uh, you know that that exercise of uh, writing down all the values that I have and making sure that they're in kind of like top to bottom uh, order, as well as um, really making sure like each area from like business to uh, my creative side to like my friend stuff is everything in order because I'm learning uh, that I can't do everything at once as much as I'd like to. Uh, but I think Walter, like the biggest gift for me is just you know, we've meeting every few months, um, just getting to like share books and ideas and TED talks and um, just having you give me feedback on all the things that I'm pursuing. Um, I remember you gave me Tuesday with Maury um, about maybe like four years ago. And that book still to this day is probably one of my favorite books and just the lessons in that and kind of tie in with uh, the big one, which I'll share in a minute. But yeah, I think for me, and I know this has been shared and it will probably be shared again, is, is Walter, like I feel really lucky um, to have you as someone who's guiding and just a friend, uh, like you really care. Um, you've always just been, like the word I like to use is reliable, but that doesn't convey the, the, how much you care. And it's so clear, you just care about me, you want the best for me. And you've always been an open ear for anything I'm going through, whether it's um, writing my book, which Walter, I, you opened up that you had, you're a slower reader and yet you read every page of the 300 page book I wrote um, and, you know, took the diligence to do that. So I can't thank you enough. And I think the biggest lesson, one that I'm sure everyone here is familiar with, is uh, the power of expressing gratitude in the moment um, about someone. And it was a Tuesday in October of 2018. And I don't know what it was, divine intervention slash missed with reading. This is the moment in knowing Walter. But I called my grandfather, who was um, in a lot of pain and not doing so well. Um, there were no signs he was going to pass. But I called him and I told him everything, how much I loved him and cared about him and appreciated him. And I had no idea that was going to be the last time I spoke with him. And he passed a few days later. And I can't even tell you how much peace I feel because I said everything I could have ever wanted to say to him. And so Walter, um, I wanna thank you for instilling that, the power of expressing gratitude to people because it's a gift for me to share it, but also a gift um, for him to hear it. Thank you, Jake, that, that was awesome. Uh, I enjoyed your TED talk, by the way. I was doing my research as part of this. So I, I wish I could speak like you uh, did back then. I mean, that was amazing, it was incredible. Okay, um, anybody want to? I'll go. All right, Tim? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so like I said, I gave you guys the exact date that we started working together. Um, what 
you know, what Walter introduced me to, which I'm sure he introduced you know, all you guys to, and I know it was mentioned, is the, the art form of ideal outcomes. And um, so overall, that's like tactically the biggest thing he's brought into my life. And I've been doing it um, consistently for probably five years. Uh, every month I, I check in, so I just did it three days ago um, to update my month to month chart and see how I'm progressing in, in accomplishing the goals that he helped me you know, set, but helped me realize that, that I really ca- what I really cared about. Um, so just to dig into what I, ideal outcomes have taught me, um, being able to do like a match comparison, for instance, to be able to figure out what the things are that you truly care about has been invaluable to me. You know, things that I thought I cared about, I didn't as much. Um, being able to really figure out, um, you know, how much satisfaction I'm getting out of something, the things I shouldn't focus on, the things I should focus on, um, are just such practical methods that I haven't seen anywhere else. And the idea of being able to set goals, but measure them and, uh, you know, question them and and give your life some focus um, has has changed everything for me. And the concept of an ideal outcome um, goes beyond just goal setting. Uh, You know, I think Lisa, you mentioned meetings and that's very true for me too. I'll take that idea of what do I want the result of this to be? What do I want to get out of this? And it just gives everything focus. It allows me to, you know, if it is a meeting, structure questions, structure the experience, it could be as simple as writing an email, if, even if it's personal. So tactically, um, he's giving me that, and, and that's been a huge, huge life changer for me. Um, I, I, there's a couple other things I just want to mention. but um, So I've, I've struggled a lot coming out of my, my childhood you know, with depression and, and all, those, all those things that are particularly relevant now. And, you know, Walter was one of the first people that I felt outside of, you know, maybe my dad, one of the first people that I felt comfortable opening up to about that, uh, just because it was such a stigmatized thing to talk about. So just being somebody I could be open and honest with and and share the actual goals that I had for myself around this, you know, incredibly difficult problem that, that felt almost impossible to overcome, you know, having somebody to, um, to help me get through it in a really practical way was huge. And, um, you know, I, I think that kind of ties into the next point I want to make, which is how to hold painful experiences. So because of, you know, the things that I struggle with, I have done a crazy amount of stuff. I mean, I've, I've really done a lot. And being able to look at something that was painful in a positive way by seeing all the all the ways I'm better because of it because of the things I'm done is something that seems obvious but I just wasn't able to see it um, until I had you know one conversation with Walter um, and and the last thing I'll leave you guys with and leave you with Walter is um, probably the most important thing um, you taught me how to be how to be and how to aspire to be, which I continue to do a better human being. And it wasn't something you did um, explicitly. It's something that I I take away implicitly from, from every conversation, every experience I have with you, you know, you are the, the type of person that I want to be and I want to become. You're the only human outside of parents that is, I can truly say is, is selfless and, you know, I hope, I hope to one day be half the man that, that you are. You mean so much to me. Thank you so much, Tim. Um, we had, we had a, uh, a last minute entry here. Uh, Craig Kielberger, welcome. He's not, he's not zoom bombing, the he, he's an official invitee, but, uh, we, we he really just the, got, he wasn't on the list. How did he get on the list? I know he wasn't on the list. How and, he uh, he's my mentor. How did he get invited? <laughs> but I, I just felt compelled to reach out to Craig literally a few minutes ago and, uh, he was kind enough to, to jump in, but Craig, um, just, uh, give, 
let people who know who you are, where you're calling in from, and how long you've known Walter. It'd be great. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? The minute I got the message, and I'm sorry for those who I, I might be throwing a little off the order. My apologies to, to, to those who have been so graciously on this call for a long time. But the minute I heard there was a tribute to Walter going on, I said, absolutely. I'm in. What's going on? How do I join? Get me on. So um, I, I don't have context to what people have said before. But Walter, I do have context to the journey that we've had together. And when I say journey, I mean literally, because you know we've gone for some really epic walks together. And our walks where we've talked about life, where our walks in Kenya, in the Mara together with Jason, all those years ago, well over a decade ago, when we were having conversations about what it means to, for gratitude and perspective on life, we're speeding ahead. You lay foundations for a school that now two generations of the Green family later have continued to build and teach and serve at. Walks along the coast we've done in California when I was wrestling with questions of how do I balance being a dad and how do I balance with the nonprofit that I love so much and, and you're reassuring me and saying it will, it will naturally be. Uh, and, and it isn't something learned, it is something that comes to be just at your core and at your soul and at who you are. Uh, walks when we've sought your guidance in some of the strategic growth questions and some of the strategic wrestling about our future. Uh, you are the person who has the balance between wisdom rooted in life experience and business, I love the practical part of you, with the wisdom rooted in compassion and empathy and heart, and I love that part of you equally. Um, I, 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 I only, I, everyone's gonna speak to who you are as a person, I'm sure. So I actually just wanna give you an update uh, of, of a conversation I had today that you don't even know about and it's because of you. So some people on, on, on this call may or may not be aware um, Walter, in his extraordinary kindness, established a, a tourism and hospitality college uh, through a, a charity that I'm part of. And, and this stands as a tribute uh, to Lola, to Walter, to the Green family. And it's on the edge of the Masai Mara in Kenya. And what, of course, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure one of the reasons we're doing this via Zoom instead of being in person is the reality of our world is a very uh, difficult time, obviously, right now. And, and nowhere more so than in Sub-Saharan Africa, where some of you may have seen the estimates that Gates talks about of over 10 million lives that will be lost from COVID-19. Social distancing isn't a reality. Uh, people don't know what's going on. And so in this corner of Kenya, where you built this college with us, and three generations of the Green family have laid foundation stones with us, quite literally, um, graduates were graduating through the college for tourism and hospitality to lead guests in the Masai Mara to provide for their family. That was, of course, the original intention. Uh, because of what's taken place right now, the college has been put on pause, as many education institutions around the world. And it's actually being converted, uh, as we speak, in partnership with the government on a temporary basis, of course, to become a, a medical institution to help those who need the help because of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, every graduate of the college, uh, and frankly, some who haven't even graduated, they're only in year one, uh, are now offered a job. Uh, and we're hiring them in the short term to do public health. So because of you, these graduates will be knocking door to door. That's the only way to get the, no the, the message out. You know what it's like there. Uh, we've got radio and SMS, but mostly it's just door to door to teach people how to protect themselves and to understand about hand washing and to understand what they can do. And then all around, and I'll send you some photos, you'll see the, the, the College of Tourism and Hospitality that you built, and all around it, there are now these tents that are being uh, placed, uh, what look like a mash community of tents. You know the youth tents have all been moved, uh, and they're moving into the college um, mattresses, and they're moving in bed frames, and they're setting up these tents, because this will be one of the official regions in the government to help meet the COVID-19 uh, response. Uh, we've part teamed up with Doctors Without Borders, Médecins Sans Frontières, who will be providing the pandemic uh, medical lead and the graduates who are both doing the short term right now in public health. Uh, they will be offered jobs if they want um, to continue in their own villages to identify people who are uh, potentially positive and then we'll send out uh, testing to those villages and then bring them to this facility and all the other colleges to stay at so there isn't a, a further spreading in these rural communities. It's so critical what you enabled, the physical infrastructure that you enabled. We never envisioned, of course, would be used for this. 
but it literally will be uh, saving lives. It will be giving a space where we can bring and concentrate medical care and we can bring people both exit them from the community if they're, uh, they're, they're positive to make sure that they don't spread it further, but to make sure that in, in a centralized place that we can meet the need on a medical level. And those graduates who came through the college, all the leadership training and the self-confidence and the, the goal setting, the, all the things we talked about in our walks together, we're now using that same leadership framework to ensure that they have the tools to take care of their families and their communities and to educate them how to protect themselves. Uh, and so without even knowing it, Walter, um, and with, God, none of us could have imagined this, obviously, but you put into place the infrastructure uh, that will literally save lives and, and in, in a part of the world that it's uh, forgotten by a lot of people. And I know you've taken care of a lot of people at home and a lot of people in California. And I'm sure that's a lot of the tributes here today, but I appreciate that your heart is big enough that you've also taken care of a lot of people around the world. And that gives them a fighting chance at this time. So depths of gratitude to you and to your family. Thank you so much, Craig. And thanks, thanks for jumping in at the last minute. It really is uh, extraordinary um, to have so, you here. So. so Jace, normally I wouldn't jump in, but I, I uh, didn't intend to see Craig. Uh, and I, I just, everyone else would have the chance to know something, but I just wanted to say when I was at a reception when this host came over to me and said that there's these two brothers that would like to say hello to you. They're teenage, one's a teenager, one may have been 21 at the time. And I said, you know, what do they want to talk to an old guy for? And so I said, well, they're, they're interesting guys from Toronto. You might enjoy them. So he came over and I said, listen, uh, he asked me about what I was doing with the Elementary Institute of Science in San Diego. I said, I'll be happy to tell you, but you got to tell me why a teenager from Toronto really cares. <laughs> So began a relationship that's gone on for how many years now, Craig? Oh, we're heading close to two decades at this point. Almost two decades. Um, uh, Craig Kilberger and I will announce it uh, to this group of people who I have enormous regard for. I might not live to see it, but if there is a Nobel Peace Prize, it's deserved. His work is deserved of that, and it's been an honor for me to be a part of that. I know Samantha went over to Kenya. Uh, Jason and his family uh, followed over there. Uh, it's not just Kenya, he's in Ecuador, he's all over the world. He's selfless, uh, but brilliant. And he and his brother in an organization that now numbers in the hundreds, I presume, doing just spectacular work. And the fact that you showed up today is just all great, so thanks. Walter, we get to stand on the shoulders of giants and so much love and so much gratitude to you. And not only to you for the values you raised your family now, three generations, extraordinary, that's a legacy. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. Um, how about, uh, I'm gonna call on my cousin, Eric, because He's my cousin. You need, you need somebody to go after the future. I need nope. somebody to go after Greg. Somebody's going to have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that was awesome. So very nice to, uh, it's very nice to meet you, all of you, but, but uh, Craig, that was really cool to hear that. And um, so I, I guess there's a few quick things I would say. First of all, Walter, I think the number one thing that I appreciate about you is you. I just, you know, I mean, I've got more to say, but I want you to know that one of the, I think really in the end, the, the coolest thing for me with you has been that you, I've moved from being a little kid and just being your nephew to being a mentee. And, you know, you and I have really now gotten to be friends. And uh, I was telling my wife uh, the, the other day that one of the really awesome things, the thing I love the most about the last set of calls that we've had over the last, you know, couple of years is, they're, they're 50, 50, you know, and we're just, we're talking. And I just think that to me is awesome and amazing. Um, having said that, everybody on this call knows that you're a total stud. And so one of the, uh, when I, when I first met Andrew, uh, was, uh, was 20, like 20, 25 years ago, we went to the Fred Jervis seminar up in New Hampshire. Right, I was there. Too. Yeah, Jason was there. And uh, I mean, there was, a, there was a whole set of great experiences and things out of that. I mean, it was amazing. But one, one of the, the things that always stuck with me 
uh, we were sitting kind of, you know, typical banquet room, somebody's up on a stage and it wasn't Fred Jervis. It was some, it was some other person who was up there talking. And so somebody asked a question and then you got a bunch of people in the room kind of twittering, saying this, saying that, saying this, saying that. And all of a sudden I like Walter sitting behind me, so I can't see him, but I hear him open his mouth and talk. And it was like a black hole had opened and every face went Voomp! And just like was totally locked on. I mean, nobody could move. It was like watching great, like Wayne Gretzky with a puck or something. And I'm like, like, how does this guy do that? Like, that is a really cool trick. I wish I could learn how to do that. You just have tremendous presence. And, you know, it's not the thing that we like about you the most, but it is, it, it has always been true. Um, I think this has got to be the only 11 people on the planet who I don't have to really say much more and don't have anything else left to say about intentional thinking, <laughs> which is hilarious, you know? Uh, but there's no question that, that that's true for me. I mean, other bunch of other things that I could share, but the discipline and just like, it's like working out. I mean, for every day, for however many years, you know, for 30 years that you just are really intentional about like, what does success look like? How am I going to know what are going to be the indicators of success? What does that look like? What does that look like? I mean, you can kind of start to take it for granted and then you roll into meetings and conversations with people and you're talking that way or thinking that way, even if you're not articulating it and you realize like people are, you know, it's different. It's a different mode of, of operating. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. And, you know, for being able to kind of over the years figure out how to breathe that in and make it my own. You know, I, well, like one time Walter showed me this chart. This was fairly recent, not recently, but reasonably recently, this chart of like your fitness chart and all the key results and all the back planning. And I'm like, man, I can't, I mean, all I can do is like, this is success. This is where I am. And I'm going to kind of feel my way through. I can't do all this, you know, the, all the metrics, but I, to be able to kind of make it my own, um, has just been, you know, it, it's been amazing. And you all understand that in a way that really, I don't think anybody else on the planet could. And um, final thing that I, I would just say in terms of meaning, okay, Walter, some point in the X conversations we've had, we, we've talked about the idea that it's sometimes it's difficult to know what, where people get the most value. Like we think, well, this was really important, but we don't know what the recipient, what did the recipient really value? And I had a moment with you, um, year 25 years ago or so i was 28 i quit my job i was a contingent recruiter i got a lot out of it but i hated it i quit it went on a little kind of fly around the country odyssey it was i was you know married a couple of years kelly was very supportive nobody else was <laughs> but i had some people very unhappy with me and i uh, flew out to la jolla and you were you and i are walking streets and i'm very upset and i got the weight of the world on my shoulders and you just kind of made an, a kind of a side comment you said you know eric there is no downside to what you've done and it was just to you like listen man there's no downside we're just we're moving on and it was, I always sort of felt like it was you having faith for me when I didn't have any faith in me. And uh, it was cool. You know, it was, it was cool. So I could go on and on, but uh, and you know how much I appreciate you. And now I've, I've done my biggest role here, which is to be a buffer between Craig and whoever else gets to go next. So you're good. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. I was saving you for an important moment in this. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Um, Great. Any, uh, any other one? Jordan, you want to jump in? For sure. I'll definitely go. Uh, thank you, Jason, for, for setting this up and getting all the Zoom information out. Definitely appreciate it. Um, so to start for some context, this has probably been one of the hardest weeks for my brother and I this past week. Uh, last Saturday, we lost our father um, unexpectedly, and we told uh, Walter about it. And he really sent some really kind words and wisdom, even in that moment of pain. So I appreciate that. I think that's one of my orientations towards Walter. Every time I have, and I'm still getting used to saying Walter, I'm really, Mr. Green, so I'm still getting used to that, I'm still getting used to that. Um, but every time I spoke with Walter to start, um, after we got through what we have to do, what does success look like and all those things, he would ask about uh, my family, uh, my grandparents. And I think that's one thing I appreciate in like real mentorship where they care about you, but they also care about everything that you come from in the context and the life in which you live. And so I've always appreciated Walter for that because no matter how productive the meeting needed to be, there was also a moment to say, and how is your family and how are you and all those things. So I've always appreciated that. Um, 
Walter, I think, has taught me a lot. I think I got a shout out to my brother who kind of gave me an email introduction one day and Walter graciously responded. Um, I think I learned a lot from Walter, um, particularly how to send specific emails around what you want to talk about. Uh, the first email I sent to Walter for a meeting, um, I was 21, just graduated from college. And I said my three talking points were, I want to know about your background, uh, career advice, and what investments I should invest in. And he sent a very uh, gracious yet honest response of like, you know what, that's a lot to do in an hour. So let's uh, get some more critical conversation on what we should really talk about. So I appreciated that. And since then, it's really like what, what a lot of y'all have talked about, uh, where I think Walter's biggest gift to me um, so far has just been the gift of clarity, um, really being intentional around how to think, what to think, um, and really thinking about that question of like, how will I know it from metrics we have for success, for businesses we want to grow, for relationships and the impacts we want to have to the family we want to hold. Like, how will we know we've been successful for one year, three years, five years, and whatever that time horizon is? Um, the last time we talked, I just wrote down some of the quotes that I thought were most pertinent to me. He said, um, Claire is helpful no matter how powerful a person that you are. Um, and so I think that resonated with me because I think no matter how great a person may be with a lack of clarity, it might kind of lessen their impact that they can have. And so I've appreciated that that sense of clarity. And the last thing that I'll say um, was just, he talked about having a learning plan versus an execution plan. He was like, I, I don't wanna have goals in case I'm not gonna make it like it. So it really got into me this idea of setting intentional benchmarks that you adjust how you get them, but not necessarily the benchmark itself. And so I've appreciated all that wisdom um, from Walter um, in terms of just being able to think critically to um, really have that gift of clarity. I, the last time I talked to Walter, I told him, you know, while I'm here on this earth and able to make an impact, being a catalyst for Walter with his impact and using my life, um, I do a lot of speaking. So the people I speak to, the people I mentor to be a catalyst of the lessons that Walter has given me. And I think um, time, time is a very valuable resource and we don't have a lot of it. And so the gift of clarity uh, allows us to have a more meaningful, intentional life. And I appreciate Walter for entering my life and giving me a lot more clarity across all the different goals that um, I have for my life. So thank you very much, Walter. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Jordan. And um, uh, just uh, my condolences to you and your brother. And it, it means a lot that you guys participated despite that. So I'll, I'll follow up with my, my brother. Um, my brother's a lot more prepared than me. I, I don't have anything written down. Um, but like Jordan said, this is the toughest week of our life. When our, our dad was 64 years old and he died last Saturday. And um, so to to share gratitude, it means a lot. I, there's so much I didn't get to say to him that I wish I said and that I learned from Mr. Green about expressing gratitude. So this means a lot for me to be able to share this. And um, it was something that I've known Mr. Green since uh, 2008 when I was just a senior in college. And he's impacted my life more than any other person besides my parents and my brother and God. Um, this past week, he checked in with me and my brother, what, Jordan, two or three times this week. And they were so personal. Um, I, I knew Mr. Green as a professional when I met him 12 years ago. But just as Jordan said, he taught me so much professionally, but he has become family to me. He has become a part of our family. He came to my wedding. He's blessed each one of my children when they were born. We just moved into a house in December and he decided to bless our family with housewarming gift. He has changed the trajectory of my life so much. We met in January. We always meet in Rancho Valencia at least once or twice a year. And we have a big burger and fries and figure out life. And I've been at some very low points and every single job I worked at the elementary Institute of science for eight years. And that's, we work very closely together, very closely. And he taught me so much and, my big thing, I, every email that I write, I finish it with all my best. And I still do that for 12 years. And that's how he always wrote emails. And we did so much back and forth. But there's so many stories I have to tell. But he, my, he's made an impact on our 95-year-old grandpa. Every time I talk to my grandpa, he checks and says, how is Mr. Green doing? He is let Mr. Green be my and Jordan's adopted grandfather on San Diego. Our grandfather lives in Ohio and he always checks on Mr. Green. My parents do. And he's made such an impact on me professionally. Yes, but so much personally for my children. And just when Craig Kubo was here, I, I met Craig through EIS as well. And Mr. Green sent myself and other coworker to one of the Meet a We events in Canada. 
But one of the most amazing stories was in 2009 and 2011, Mr. Green sent myself and some of the high school students from the Commission on Science That Matters to DC. And it was like the biggest snowstorm in DC ever. And Mr. Green had invested so much into these high school students for us to all go there. And I was 22 at the time. And it was like my first big trip to Mr. Green had paid for for all these students to go to. And I had to make the quick decision, okay, am I going to, Sue was supposed to present at this conference and everything. And I had to make the quick decision of the kids safety versus attending the conference still. And Mr. Green reaffirmed me so many times over the years, I made the right decision to leave that conference early before we got snowed in and all these high schoolers under my care at 22 years old would be stuck in DC for weeks. But, um, I'm going back to the personal though. Mr. Green has invested so much time with me. As I said, I saw him as a professional and he has made it so hard for me. Like Jordan said, I still can't call him Walter. It's the thing of me with respect, but he is a family member to me now. He has been there for me through every single one of my job transitions. And we have walked through what he called it a fast start. What is a fast start of success look like for you for your first 30, 60, and 90 days? Through each of my three jobs that I've had since I left the elementary institute of science, we've met and we've mapped out what success looks like. Professionally, he talked to me how to handle paying off debt, how to buy a new ring for my wife, how to get a bathroom built in my house, every single thing. I mean, I'm serious. And it's changed my life. And I, down to how I write my emails, that's how much he's impacted me but it's also how he's impacted my wife, my kids, my future, my past. And I, as Jordan, this is literally the toughest week in our life ever. And I was glad that he invited to think enough of us to be on this call. And as I said, I had so much emotion I've been dealing with this week. I didn't get to say things to my dad. And I was with him when he was writing that book of This is the Moment, when he interviewed Miss Doris and then, and I just got to see his whole process of how he intentionally expressed his gratitude. And if nothing else, that's something that every single person who works with me or works under me, every meeting I run, they know that I intentionally express gratitude and they don't know, but it's because of Mr. Green. So I, I could talk for another 20 minutes, but that's, that's I'll stop. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, I think we got, we got two left. Uh, let's see. Uh, Samantha, why don't you go and, and Leon, you'll, you'll bring us home if that's okay. That's fine. Okay, so as I mentioned, um, we met at the hair salon and Walter would come in regularly. And so over time we would talk and get to know each other. And he really took an interest in getting to know me and my background and, that, and my story, which he often phrases it, that I came from this um, pretty difficult uh, family situation. I had been, I've been on my own since I was 17 and I don't have really any family support. And I was, you know, like I said, working full time as a means of putting myself through school full time. And, um, you know, it was always really special to me how much he seemed to like, you know, ask questions in a way that like when you can tell when somebody asks something and they're not, they don't really care, they're asking just to go through the motion where versus somebody who asks because they really are invested in care. And Walter was that way with me from the beginning. Um, but what I really think happened uh, was about a couple years later, I then had transferred from community college to UCSD. And I think that that was really when the mentorship role took off. He was helping, guiding me through important decisions with school and personal, um, you know, family issues and knowing like when to, you know, how to deal with difficult relationships and, um, you know, kind of letting go of things. Um, he helped me figure out exploring different areas of my passion and with my, um, I did like an internship on the Senate and helped me tremendously in making those decisions. And see, Walter has been such a crucial component of each of these accomplishments and steps because he's taught me how to be, as you all kind of echo, very intentional in my decision making. And he has showed me also the value in doing that. Um, and he's done this by, you know, again, like really being invested in, in, in showing an interest in me and my happiness and my success. He does this by really asking the important questions um, that are thought provoking that will force me to really identify what it is my goal is versus just accepting what seems like it should be. 
Um, he's done, he's helped me with decisions uh, in ways of like implementing decision, like index grids where, you know, we lay out big picture outcomes and choices and rank things and to see the best option. And again, really forcing myself to honestly ask why I want something, not just what it is. Um, so really helping hone in and focus on things in like in such a beneficial way. Um, we've done this with picking law schools and deciding between jobs. And really this is a skill that um, has been utilized and, and, and evolved throughout his men or the mentorship and like some of the biggest decisions that I've had to make. And it's allowed me to discover things like how much joy I get out of doing meaningful and impactful work. And it allowed me to find that I'm passionate about, um, you know, wanting to work on climate change issues, which then led me to deciding, you know, that I think going to law school was the best way to go about that. And then that led me to realizing that, you know, the DOJ would have been, was the best job to have to be able to do that. And through all of that type of thinking, I was able to like accomplish each one of those things because I had this type of like, methodical way of making these decisions. Um, and being intentional with this decision making has really cultivated a life of meaning and purpose and passion for me. Um, it's given me a great way of problem solving and communicating in my personal and professional life. And it also gives me a tremendous amount of confidence because all of my choices are backed by such, such well thought out intentions that align so well with my goals and values. Um, and, you know, Walter guiding me through this I, and, and teaching me this unique skill and helping finesse that, I was like, yeah, that's definitely like the most valuable part. And as I was kind of replaying all of this, as I was thinking about this when Jason sent the in, invite, I was like, but really what has been the most valuable part is to know that there's been somebody who takes so much time and effort and, and cares about, you know, my success and my happiness and has like done phone interviews with me and read cover letters. I mean, like it's endless. And so really, I mean, the most value, the, the most valuable thing out of this mentorship to me is that you've shown me, oh, sorry, I didn't want to cry, um, what it feels like to have someone believe in me. And I had never had that. And, you know, you're the first person that I call when I have something exciting to share. You're the first person I go to when I have a problem. And you are a driving, motivating force behind why I strive to really want to continue to make you proud because of the unconditional love and support you've shown me. So thank you. Thank you, Samantha. All right, Leon, uh, bring us home. So. All right. Uh, I'm uh, Leon Arano, which as I said before, I'm a cousin. And my, uh, you know, you, everybody has enunciated very, very well, uh, you know, my feelings, you know, for Walter. I always call him Uncle Walter. I, I'm used to doing that, so I'm not going to stop at age 65. But basically, uh, my relationship with him, we, uh, uh, Jason will probably agree that we come from a pretty interesting family background, uh, in my case on both sides. And my parents went through a very horrific divorce and Uncle Walter was uh, uh, there. Uh, and I decided at a young age that, that having uh, relationships uh, with people who could put, point me in the right direction uh, were extremely important, but having a relationship in and of itself requires a lot of work on the part of the person who uh, is involved uh, on my end of it and, is, and also on, on Walter's end of it. And I always took it upon myself from my 13, 14, 15 years to, to build a relationship. When I was in college, uh, I, I, he invited me to shadow him at the Harrison Center for a few days, and I learned uh, how that business ran. And, and the, one, the one big thing that I learned at that point in life was if I was going to be a success in any career, you had to A, not expect anybody to do anything that you're not willing to do yourself. B, you have to be uh, respectful of everybody, no matter where their position is in a company. And C, 
you have to be pride, have pride and be proud of, of the end product, whether it be a meeting, a conference. And, you know, I went on a career path where I became an executive level person in New York State government. Had a lot of people on my watch to supervise and oversee off, off various state agencies to help run from the compliance fiscal administration areas. And every day I would say to myself, how would Walter handle this meeting? How would Walter handle this challenge? Uh, I always set my meetings up uh, is, and, and put the agendas on one page because he always said, if you can't get it done in one page, you're wasting everybody's time. But the most important thing that, that I can leave everybody with, and I could talk for two hours because, you know, I'm, I'm a nephew and we go back a long time. And I, I'm amazed at, at how much time he's devoted to everybody in this group. Uh, I can vouch for the fact that he's been a, a great resource for me. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's expected, he expects me to, to, to perform at a high level of integrity. Uh, I've tried to live my life by those uh, values that have been instilled in me by him over the years. Um, I think that uh, the, the key thing here is uh, he will listen if you talk to him. He will tell you uh, if he disagrees with you in pretty straightforward terms. And he'll also give you accolades and congratulations when you, uh, when you have an accomplishment that you want to share with him. And that's been the case with, with, uh, with, with he and I for the last, you know, over, I'll say since 1968. So that uh, goes back certainly 52 years. And that's a long time, half, over half a century. So all I can say is I appreciate all the guidance and all the, all the, uh, the, the interest. I appreciate the loyalty. Uh, I appreciate the fact that there's always an interested ear they're waiting to listen and also a very interested person there, uh, uh, you know, willing to uh, say the right or the wrong thing for me to interpret and act accordingly. And the best part for me has been, he's been a link to uh, my, uh, my grandfather, his father, who I never knew. He died when I was very young. And, you know, a family relationship uh, is, is different because I think there are certain liberties that, uh, you know, he can be a, a, a tough guy with me and a hard ass with me. And he's probably tougher on me in a lot of respects than he would be with any of you guys because I'm his nephew and he expect, he always expected top rate A plus performance. And I've always tried to do that. So I can say to, to, uh, to you, Uncle Walter, thank you. I appreciate all your, your, your friendship, your guidance, your, uh, your interest, and uh, most of all the love that you've exhibited, uh, and directed towards me, my daughter, and my wife over the course of my life. Thank you, Leon. So um, we, uh, we're kind of a little bit past our, our appointed hour, but I did want to take an opportunity to just thank everybody here uh, for allowing me to see my father through your eyes. Um, I knew how lucky I was as a son to have him uh, as a father, and now I appreciate uh, him even more knowing the impact that he's had on all of you. And you know how intentional he is about how he spends his time and who he chooses to spend it with. And I think that says a lot about this group, the level of uh, commitment and passion and caring that he's shown uh, to, to you all says a lot about you. So um, thank you for, for participating today, for sharing uh, some incredible feedback and stories. And, and dad, I guess I'll, I'll let you, uh, uh, complete the, uh, the circle here. Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> this was a deeply moving experience. Uh, as I look at this uh, portrait, uh, I only have one feeling. I've spent a lot of my time really well. You guys are classy, you're elegant. You're humane, you're charitable, you're kind, you're smart, you're energetic. How blessed I am to have you as part of my legacy and a very important part of my legacy. You know, I, I had this idea that what I did on This Is The Moment by expressing gratitude to specific people. Uh, a couple months ago, I had uh, this thought. 
There's a story behind it. Uh, I'll share that story at some point when there's more time. I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, but I basically concluded that as uncommon as it is to tell people who have been important in your life the impact on you, I also think as a society, we wait until we deliver a eulogy or we go to a celebration of life. I went to one recently, it was four hours. Maybe 80 people participated. And I thought, boy, I would have liked to know that about that guy when he was alive. I had no idea. Um, and just quickly, uh, I, I think it's relevant. Most of you know, I've mentioned my good friend, Denny, a 50 year friend, probably the most the happiest guy I know, least amount of resources, been through everything with him. And when he was 74 and a half, he said to me, he said, Walter, I want you to, uh, I want you to know you're the executor of my estate and I want you to have a really nice celebration when I'm gone and I've set aside $10,000 for you to have that party. And I said, uh, uh, Denny, uh, wouldn't you want to be there? And he said, well, yeah, I would, but I'll be gone. I said, well, that's the only way, that's how you've constructed it. You're 74, you're going to be 75 and we're going to have that party when you're 75. And if we don't have a party when you're 75 to celebrate your life, I will not do it after you're gone. That's how much pressure I put on. He said, okay, we'll do it. Had a fantastic party. It was wonderful. The love, the spirit, his guy was unbelievable. And a dear, dear friend. Uh, next year he had his half of his leg amputated and a year and a half later he died. And I said I would do his celebration of life, and I did. Many of the people there were the same. And I promise you, it's like an eye test. Check this one out. 75th birthday party, everybody's having a grand time telling him about the impact of his life. This one, we miss him. We are honoring him. And so a couple months ago, when I was having this conversation with Jason, I said, Jason, there is an uncommon celebration that needs to take place. And actually I did this with Lola for her milestone birthday in January. It wasn't a birthday party. I celebrated her whole life. That to me was a time to celebrate. And I said, I would love maybe to figure out how to create an awareness that there's a power in a group doing a living tribute. Jason said, that's, that's an, that's an interesting idea, you know, getting people from all over the country and whatever is a little complicated, especially now, that actually is a pretty good Zoom, a Zoom opportunity. So I said, wow, maybe, maybe that is a way to start this off. And then I actually had a conversation with Lisa about it. She was going to be the first case with her grandma. And then I talked to Eric and Eric said, oh, let me get this invite. That's a good idea. Let's get this invite out. And so, now having experienced this, uh, it's something I want to share with others. And thanks to each of you. I, I look at Andrew, who is so compromised even before today, is with some challenging issues without going into each of you. Um, but others are, are, are having challenging issues. Uh, the loss of one's father just a week ago and having Jordan and Brandon show up? Come on. Are you kidding me? May he rest in peace. He was a good man. He produced two fabulous kids. What a great legacy. And so for me, I've always maintained that we don't really, we think we know who we are, but really who I am is who you say I am. And I thank each of you for holding me the way you do and manifesting what you learn in the life of others. Uh, I, I will end by saying to you one night I had a dream and the dream was actually in this room. 
and I was really compromised. And in this dream, I dreamt that I would have my mentees from long ago, one by one, come into me while I'm in this chair about six feet away and tell me about the impact I might have had on their life. So I would have truly appreciated my legacy. So thank you for that today, Jason. Thank you for your initiative, your love, your support, and executing today. I'll always remember this moment. Thank you. Thank you.